From the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 to 13. On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he laid his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. The text is longer than what we just read. If you like, you can read until the verse 17, and there you will see a discussion between Jesus and the synagogue leaders. But today, I will focus on the first part of the text, on the meeting between Jesus and the woman. It is a Sabbath day. Jesus regularly attends worship in the synagogue, and he is often invited to teach. In the synagogue, there are several people, and among them, maybe at the back of the room, there is a woman. The text says that she has been crippled for 18 years. Literally, she had a spirit of weakness for 18 years. We can consider it was half a lifetime in an age where life expectancy is short. So it's quite a long time. We can try to imagine what this means for her. She is bent over. Some translations say bent double. Her field of view is reduced and she can see only her feet. In this condition, we can suppose that walking is difficult and the relationships with others as well. She is forced to spend life looking down at the ground rather than up at the sky. She cannot look people in the eye. In a way, this weakness locked the woman up inside herself. Sometimes we feel like this in our life. We have the impression to be in a situation without any escape, where we feel closed up where we cannot see further than our feet. However, even with this sickness, that maybe makes her feel ashamed, the woman is there, in the synagogue, to pray. And something unexpected happens to her. Jesus saw her. The woman cannot look around properly, she can only hear, and maybe she was there that day without any hope for a change in her life. But it is Jesus who noticed her. He is not only looking at her, he sees her among all the people there. Jesus stops teaching, he directs all his attention to her, and he calls her forward. He will meet her personally. In a way, he invites her to move out of the crowd, to come to the light, to go out from her hidden place, to come to him. When Jesus speaks to her, he says, woman. He doesn't say, you over there, the one bent over, or uh, you, the crippled woman, back there. Jesus doesn't define her by her sickness. He doesn't reduce her to her weakness. He is able to see in her much more than anyone else could see. Her real identity, her whole being, the core of herself and he calls her woman. With this word, 
Jesus restores her dignity because first she is a woman and she always has been, even in spite of her sickness. You are set free. Jesus doesn't say healed. He used a word that in some text is translated as let go, liberated or released from your infirmity. The word for infirmity means literally without strength. Now, if we look at the scene from the woman's side, you can imagine you are there, you hear this sentence, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. The sentence is not so precise. It could be for any other woman there. So, the woman has to believe that this word is for her. She has to tell to herself, he is calling me. This word of hope is for me today. For the woman, the movement, the change, is first an inner movement based on the word of Jesus who brings her from despair and discouragement to trust. From despair and discouragement for a situation which lasted very long time to trust that something new is still possible in our life, even after 18 years. Then Jesus laid his hand on her and immediately she straightened up and glorified God. The woman stands up and the first person she sees is Jesus. Perhaps the first person who looked at her with love. We can say that this text is speaking about a creation, reminding us of the book of Genesis, where God creates the human being, man and woman, in the image of himself. And this image is not an image of a static perfection, but the passion work of God in us and in the world, calling us to be fully ourselves, to exist, to be concerned about others. Now I will leave you some questions to continue your reflection. You can ask to yourself, in my life, where do I have the impression there is a call for me to move forward, to pass from discouragement to trust? And what call do I feel there is for our societies? Then, looking back at the past days, could I recognize the presence of God in my daily life, paying attention to me, paying attention to the others? 